eight days. Because I was so on fire to launch the pre-sale of Apica screws, I jammed this puzzle box build into my already busy schedule and knocked it out in eight days. Just over a week, even though it had mechanical complexities and woodworking techniques that were new to me. I am not bragging about this. It wasn't a good idea, especially since it involved a lot of trading sleep for shop time. As much as I tried not to sacrifice safety throughout this build, I think it would be naive to believe that no compromises were made. I probably breathed more dust during the course of this project than I would usually do. I'm wearing my first defense nasal screens for this sanding process, but I wasn't so great about getting them on all the time when I knew that it was dusty in the shop. And I can't deny that I had the worst table saw accident yet of my woodworking career. It happened when I was cutting segments, which is not something I do a whole lot of. But this isn't just a story about pushing too hard and working tired. A bigger problem is that I had it in my head that serious kickback required a fence for the workpiece to jam against, and that loose pieces to the right of the blade weren't a real risk. I know that a lot of you are halfway through comments about how you would have known better. That's fine. Go ahead and write your comments. But if anyone out there is also underestimating this risk, this will probably change your thinking. One piece pushes another in such a way that the front piece rotates into the back of the blade and then somehow the pieces jam against each other with the end result being that a small sharp piece of wood is fired at my head at about the same speed as the tip of the blade. I did have safety glasses on if you're curious, but it hit me in the forehead. I'm not going to show it. No stitches were required. It'll heal without a scar. It certainly could have been worse, and I need a better process immediately to finish this project and for anything in the future. Before getting into that, I know that many of you are screaming at me for not having the riving knife on my saw, so let's talk about that first. Did you catch that? The riving knife is on a spring mount that gives it a little bit of a featherboard effect to push the workpiece against the fence. This is fantastic, I love having my saw set up this way, but it does cause some problems for cross cuts, and adjusting that spring mechanism is a long process, it's just impractical to be changing it around so that I can have the riving knife on the saw when I'm doing cross cuts. I need a different solution. So I have four options for you, each pretty good in my opinion, but use your own judgment and do what you feel is safe in your workshop. In the bottom left, a thin tapered piece of wood is clamped in a position to push the segments away from the blade as they're cut and keep them away from the dangerous back of half of the saw. In the top left, what wood you turn from Instagram is cutting the segments off an elevated sled and they tumble down a wedge on the side of the blade. This similarly keeps them in a safe area. And on the right, I'm setting up a compressed air hose to push the pieces away with air. That's how I got through most of the rest of the project. Admittedly, this would have been better if I had a regulator to dial back the air to a bit more gently push them away, but, you know, I picked them up off the floor, it worked, it got me through. And lastly, someone suggested something that Ramon Artful did on Instagram, who you should follow by the way. So for the sake of completeness, I thought I'd build that and see how it worked. Mm -hmm. This is the same bit set that I sell, by the way, to recess the acrylic in a twin turbo vise. It's just set up with a different bearing, so the dimension of the rabbit is different.
So with that screen in place, I can use my vacuum mount to collect the pieces and empty it out when I'm finished. There's a link in the description for the build of this vacuum mount if you're curious, and also a link for the launch of the Pico screws that had me rushing to get this done in the first place, like I said in the beginning. It's not a lot of fun showing you something I did in the shop that was less than brilliant, but absolutely worth it if somebody learns something and stays safe and avoids a similar incident. So, hope you got something from it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.